In this video, we'll be looking at what's new in Reaper 5.975. Okay, so we're going to start off this one with the Media Explorer. And this is actually a couple bugs that I had reported only a week or two ago uh, related to automation items and when you import them into the project. The first one is import automation item name when inserting via Media Explorer action. When you import a automation item into the project and it has a name, it should import that name, whether you drag and drop or you just select it and hit return or enter, and it, it should import with that name. Uh, the other thing that I reported as a bug was that when you import multiple automation items, it would stack them in place instead of going sequentially. So if I drag in, uh, I've got four items here. I put them in here at the cursor. I would expect them to not fill just this you know, one bar. It actually goes in order that they're selected in the Media Explorer. And uh, yeah, it's much more useful that way. I reported the bug and they fixed it like right away. Awesome. The next thing is related to automation items and the project bay. So if we go to the view menu and project bay. So if you've never seen this before, this is a really helpful window to manage your files that are inside of this project. So there's source media, and so that's any audio files or any file that actually lives on the hard drive. You can find the, the file name. You can play it from here. You can see if it's online or um, muted or inactive or anything like that. What track it, lo it is on currently, how long it is, what position it's in, what type of file, all these sorts of things. Then there's media items, which is, um, it could be the source files. It could be your MIDI items. And if you have a, a split in an item like this, you'll see these as separate media items because they are not separate media, media items, but they're not separate files. Moving on to what's actually new here is that in addition to source media and media items, we also have an automation items category or column here in the project bay. And we can see various things about um, the automation items that are in the project. So uh, we can go through here and select them. Uh, we can mute an automation item from here. We can rename it, all sorts of things. So really cool to have that in the project bay now. In the previous update video, I talked about how you could select uh, regions and render just an individual region, uh, which is great if you have a whole bunch of regions and you've rendered, um, you want to render just one of them or you want uh, you render everything in a batch, then you make one small change to something, and instead of running the whole batch again or changing the whole render matrix, you can just select one and render that one uh, without making a time selection even. So it's it's a really cool thing. So that's improved further by um, by this update. Display selected regions for rendering more distinctly. So I'm going to put in two regions, and so this first one we can now right click. So another thing they've added, add context menu item to render individual regions. So these go together. We can right click it. We can select the region, which looks mostly the same, but it does have a, a square edge uh, at the beginning and end compared to a curved edge, just to show that it's selected. And then there's also a render region, and that will automatically select this one for rendering. Uh, let's actually rename this region so we have a a name for it. So region two, I'm going to set to selected re uh, select the region and go to region rendering and render selected regions. If I call this region, we'll get the name, and you can see that here region two is the title of this. So just a little more streamlined. It makes that region selection a lot more useful. Up next is a change to snapping, snap to grid settings window. There's this new option here, snap to edges of media items on any track for cursor and selection. So I'm going to enable this for selection. And uh, so if I make a time selection like this, uh, you can see that my mouse actually catches on the edge of this media item. Instead of uh, being just on like the region edges, it now snaps to the beginning and ends 
of items. Uh, let's just make in another track and put in a couple media items. And so I can make a, a time selection. And as I'm dragging out, it's going to snap. And if I'm adjusting a time selection, I can snap it to those item edges, which makes it a lot more convenient. To compare with that turned off, it's like this. So there's no snapping to those media items, only to the uh, marker and region lines. For take effects, uh, let's just take one of these items and add in an effect. So I put in some effects that are on these individual takes. So there's new actions for setting the selected items take effects offline or online. So there's this one, run that, and those plugin windows disappeared and these are now disabled. So I'll open that up. You can see here it's disabled. If I open up the effects chain, it says it's offline. And so I can select these two items and then set offline, or I mean online, and that will refloat those windows and bring them back online. So this could be really useful for a post-production workflow. Uh, before you save and close your project for the day, you could set all your, um, your take effects offline. And then when you load the project again, uh, it, it loads much faster. It doesn't have to load in individual uh, take effects. And then as you're working on each section of the project, you can turn them on again as you need. But the entire project doesn't need to be online um, at once. The last one is it's in the project category, but really where I find this most useful is with video editing. So losslessly include long, complex track, take, marker, region names in project undo state. So I think I showed this recently in an update video where you could um, insert the video effects um, and use the item's name as the text in the item. So let's find that um, text overlay. So if this area here is blank, just empty, it's going to use the item name. So if we look in the video window, like this, it says untitled MIDI item. And so if we rename this item in uh, item properties, rename uh, video title, you see video title here. So what I ran into making the last update video was that if I formatted my text a certain way, I'll just show you my Evernote window here. So I have my text formatted a certain way for my video titles. I would copy that and I'd run a, uh, a custom action to insert my text with that formatting minus the colors um, in the text overlay the way that I wanted to look for the certain length of time. It looked perfect and it saved me like an hour of editing in the the actual project but when i rendered it most of those changes were missing so i didn't catch it until someone said in the published video like probably within five minutes but he caught he caught it he mentioned that there was a problem and so i took the video offline the video ended up being very late uh, because of that error because of that bug or my assumption that it worked a certain way i asked justin and he fixed it pretty much right away uh for the for the next pre-release and yeah it's, it's a fantastic way of working now so i'm going to open up the video window and i'll show you that the custom action workflow that i came up with that is actually a real good time saver so i'm going to take this text here copy it and so i'll run my action and paste and now i have an item of a certain length with a um my text overlay in here with all the settings, the position, and everything that I like. I've got the text pasted in to the um, the item name, and then I've got a marker which is also named with the same thing, so I can do my timestamps. So I can easily go from making a, a copy here to pasting it in, and I have it, having not only my titles in the video, but my timestamps done automatically. So that was a huge workflow improvement for myself. Hopefully you can find that useful as well. And I'll just show you my 
custom action. And uh, you can just pause here if you want to copy that. So that was the last thing I wanted to show you in this video. There's lots more in the change log, so check that out. Lots of little bug fixes and, and changes, but those were the most important uh, things to show you, in my opinion. Um, hope you found it interesting and useful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.